Hello, welcome to LCG's preview for the week ahead. I'm going to discuss the G20 summit in Buenos Aires where Presidents Donald Trump and Xi Jinping are expected to meet, the bear market in oil, and US stocks are raising their 2018 gains. That's all ahead of FOMC minutes, US GDP, and the PMIs for November. Before that, I'll run down the biggest events in the economic calendar. On Monday, we have the remains of the EU Brexit summit, which mostly takes part on Sunday. We have German IFO for November following that. On Tuesday, it's rather slow, while on Wednesday, it's US third quarter GDP. On Thursday, there is German unemployment, US core PCE inflation, and the FOMC minutes. And on Friday, it's Japanese inflation, China PMIs, and Eurozone CPI. Moving on to the top corporate results to watch this week. Pets at Home report first half results on Monday. Salesforce result quarterly numbers on Tuesday. Boxing and Tiffany & Co report Q3 earnings on Wednesday. Green King publishes its half-year update, while Dell Technologies, Abercrombie & Fitch, and GameStop report third quarter earnings on Thursday. Then on Friday, we round it off with uh, Q3 earnings from HP Inc. So the, the main event of the week, and probably indeed one of the two main events lasting for the rest of 2018, if you count the second one being uh, the next Fed meeting, is this G20 summit. Obviously, trade concerns been forefront of why uh, investors have been a little more concerned over the last month or so. Uh, so there's some hope that uh, President Trump and Xi can find some sort of common ground uh, with their personal meeting at this G20 meeting, which uh, starts, on, it starts on Friday. Uh, it's November 20th and it's in Buenos Aires and at Argentina. It's unlikely to have any material agreement here, but what we want to see is a kind of a warming of the relations, uh, something that markets can grab hold of uh, and uh, kick off the, the Santa rally, which uh, so far uh, we haven't seen any of. Um, some technical indications that maybe there could be some beneficiaries from this, for example, the, the DAX index, potentially putting in a double bottom here. Uh, the DAX has big auto stocks, um, a few other big international companies, uh, which are all quite sensitive to the trade war. So again, if we see improving kind of trade war relations, then actually uh, the DAX index could be one that, uh, that benefits from that. Uh, and just as a side note, also at that G20 meeting, potentially an important one for the oil markets is that President Putin of Russia uh, may be about to discuss oil with uh, MBS of Saudi Arabia. So that's a nice segue into talking about the crash in oil prices. So oil actually hit a bear market last week. Um, the, the main concern has been that Iran sanctions are not going to be as hard as first thought. So there's, there's a supply glut hitting the market. At the same time, global growth concerns, something we're going to talk a little bit more about in a minute, um, has been hitting the demand side of the equation. So this is not currently in the market, but it's what we're looking ahead to potentially. Uh, and we saw big bullish speculation in oil prices, and that's been unwound pretty dramatically over the last few weeks. As I said, now down 20% from those highs marking the bear market. Uh, the next big event is the OPEC meeting. That's not next week, that's the week after on December 3rd. Their plan is to cut production, uh, but I guess the sense in the market at the moment is that's not quite enough. But we think maybe going into next week, OPEC becomes more of a focus and maybe we're looking at some sort of bounce, uh, technical bounce at least in oil prices. Um, again, the, the other factor being that US inventories are higher. So again, that supply glut, um, you know, really kind of forefront in people's minds, but maybe that shifts as we get closer to this OPEC meeting. So the other big thing, obviously, is that uh, US stock markets have raised their 2018 gains. So other global markets have been soft for a while. Uh, so we're down at two-year two -year lows in European markets, for example. Um, EM stocks were really kind of leading the charge lower earlier in the year. Uh, but US markets, again, kind of catching up with that, testing those October lows. Um, so there's obviously a risk that we head lower here. And I think what we've what we mentioned before, it's these global growth fears that are really kind of coming to the fore here. Um, looks like there could be some sort of synchronized slowdown in the global economy. 
perhaps led by China, but also some of the fiscal stimulus coming out of the US, rising interest rates in the US, um, kicking in more uh, come 2019. We do have US Q3 GDP data, so that will be interesting, uh, as well as the, the PMIs from what, the US, but also Europe and China. That, again, will be a bit more of an up-to-date picture on the global economy. Talking about the dollar as it relates to all this, um, the, it, the declining global growth fits into it, but really the, uh, the way global growth fits into it is how the Fed reacts to that. Uh, and something we heard the week before last was from Vice Chair Clarida, uh, that's the first time he's made some comments since becoming vice chair in September. Uh, he basically said that we're getting closer to the neutral rate, uh, meaning that actually more Fed rate hikes um, are not necessarily completely built in in 2019. He's basically suggesting we get a bit more data dependent. He's almost calling for a pause in, dollar, in US rate hikes here. And so that is obviously fairly bearish for the dollar. Um, so if we do get um, more similar comments from the Fed, maybe there is a pause next, uh, you know, next year in, in rate hikes, probably got one more in December, but if we get a pause in rate hikes next year and there's a, uh, a warming up of these trade relations at the G20 summit, that's all pretty good news for emerging markets. And uh, some, some moves are already starting to take place here. So for example, even uh, Alibaba uh, has been doing better than the, the other tech stocks tech stocks in this recent sell-off. Uh, so there's some signs that um, Chinese companies, Chinese markets, even the yuan has come off its lows. Some signs that actually emerging markets could be uh, the ones to kind of lead the bounce here, all dependent on this G20 and people's expectations for the Fed. So thank you very much for watching. Good luck trading this week. And if you want to see these videos as soon as they're released, please follow LCG on YouTube and social media.